and welcome to the EduTalk series hosted by Biotone, Biotone EduPartner Program and massage industry experts. With the challenges continuing to face the massage schools, students, and practicing therapists thanks to COVID over the last year, the EduTalk series supports virtual learning and building massage community by connecting you with industry experts who will share their knowledge and expertise on topics, not only for class success, but for career success. Tonight's expert is Ruth Werner, author of A Massage Therapist's Guide to Pathology, a groundbreaking textbook now in its seventh edition. She is columnist for Massage and Body Work magazine, as well as Massage New Zealand. Ruth teaches nationally and internationally continuing education workshops in research and pathology. And we're glad she's here with us tonight. Let's listen and learn as Ruth explores breath, COVID and massage therapy, discussing how Shortness of breath creates anxiety and anxiety creates shortness of breath, creating a vicious cycle impacting your client's ability to function with quality of life. As therapists, Ruth will share how you can apply your skills for positive impact, bringing relief to clients recovering from COVID as well as clients with lingering breath issues and anxiety issues. Again, before I turn this over to Ruth, uh, please find the view button and uh, view tonight's EduTalk with speaker view and um, be sure to mute and video off. With that, I turn it over to Ruth and thank you again for joining us. Great, thank you so much, Donnell, and thanks everybody for being here today. Um, <clears throat> Before we dive into this little talk, I'd like to just give a tiny bit of background about where this came from. Um, you know, like everybody, uh, I was sidelined by everything that happened when the pandemic struck. And I found that the most helpful and useful thing I could do would be to become a resource of um, reliable information for my profession. And I've worked really hard on doing that all this year. Um, one of the things that I was asked to do, I don't even remember when, maybe it was last fall or last summer, was to um, create a webinar for a group of massage therapists in Ontario um, as part of their research meeting, meeting. And they wanted something that was research informed or research based. And I chatted about it and wrestled with it and, and tried to figure out what it was, what I would be able to do that would have a research basis behind it while also addressing some issues around COVID. And we came up with this idea of the links between um, anxiety and breath and COVID and where massage might fit. And that's the derivation of a class that I have developed. What I'm going to do today, obviously, is not the whole class because I have you for half an hour, but it's it's just a little, it's, it's sort of the thought process that went into the development of this. And my hope is that by the time we're done with this short period of time, um, you'll have some, maybe some new ideas about what to anticipate in working with your clients who have had COVID um, or your clients who have had any other kinds of respiratory issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and move to sharing my screen. And I think that that should work. Um, and someone at Biotone, um, speak up, please, if it's not working right, okay? And I'm going to go to the full thing here for my PowerPoint. Come on, baby. There we go. Good. All right. So anxiety, breath, and COVID, what is the role for massage therapy? Um, we know that COVID is an infection that uh, for most people, not everybody, but for most people begins in the respiratory system and can lead to substantial tissue damage inside the lungs. Um, that 
substantial tissue damage, not surprisingly, can lead to breathing problems. But if we think about the consequences of breathing problems, we can see where that is going to open the door to an ongoing and sort of self-fulfilling circle of anxiety. When people can't breathe well, they feel anxious. When they feel anxious, this tightens up the breathing and we have this vicious circle. And what we end up seeing happen very frequently is that people with breathing problems from any source can develop sort of anxious holding patterns about that. That can interfere with quality of life, interfere with being able to maintain our uh, exercise and our, and, our quali- and our activities of daily living. This can exacerbate our feelings of weakness and having breathing problems, which leads to this self-fulfilling circle. When we add COVID to this mix, now we have a condition that tears up, well, tears up is perhaps uh, uh, hyperbole, but a condition that for some people at least lead to some very severe um, changes in lung function. And we'll talk a ton, this much more about what those changes look like in a little while that (laughs) <laughs> pardon me, stimulates these breathing problems leading to anxiety and panic and um, and this self-fulfilling circle. And, you know, what I'd like you to think about as you look at this circle is where your work might fit in, 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 in dealing with someone who's stuck in this place. And what you just heard me do a moment ago is you heard me cough. And that's because, not because I have COVID, because I don't, um, but because I live with a chronic cough. And that's one of the things that led me to want to explore this topic. Um, I am someone who lives with a breathing problem. It is really, really difficult for me to take a deep, easy breath that is not accompanied by a lot of concern about whether I'm going to need to cough next. And so my own experience has really informed the way I think about massage in the context of people who live with breathing problems. So what do we know about massage therapy? What does the research tell us about massage therapy? Well, what the research tells us about massage therapy in that circle of self-fulfilling prophecy is that massage lowers the experience of anxiety. We have lots of data about that. We have data about massage and improvement of breathing, not specifically for COVID, but we have um, data about massage for people who have asthma and for people who have COPD, which stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, that's emphysema or chronic bronchitis. Um, So when we can lower anxiety and improve the ease of breathing, then we've interrupted that vicious circle. In addition, we have lots of good data about massage therapy, improving a person's sense of their quality of life, a sense of their ability to be active and a sense of self-efficacy. And, you know, if you haven't heard that term before, that's something I'd like you to pay attention to, because what this means, a person who has a good sense of self-efficacy, this is a person who feels that they are capable of dealing with the stresses and blows and disruptions and things that happen on a day-to-day basis um, and know that they can ride that wave, right? Someone with high self-efficacy can really deal with the kinds of challenges that life brings us. It is inevitable that life will bring us these challenges. And a person with a low sense of self-efficacy um, is, is much more likely to be kneecapped by the things that we all have to deal with. And we see that massage is really good at promoting a sense of self-efficacy, which basically leads to improved resilience and just the ability to, to, to bounce through life with a little more ease. So in this talk that I uh, have created for these webinars, which I have now done in I'm going to be doing it again in Ontario, and I've done it for Manitoba, and I've done it for an Australian group, and I'm I'm being called on to do this talk with some regularity, which is exciting. Um, I do go into some details about anxiety that I will not be going into today, Um, but let's just be aware that anxiety is a defined thing. 
And it has to do with being in a hyper vigilant, hyper alert state and always ready for something negative to happen. Now, um, I am not saying that anxiety, you know, that that normal vigilance and paying attention to our environment is a bad thing because of course it isn't. But there are times and situations where that can become pathologic. It can literally make people sick. Um, and the sense of difficulty with breathing can be a big trigger for people who live with anxiety, particularly for people who live with symptoms like panic attack, um, where a sense of having it be really hard to catch your breath um, can start the whole somatic cycle of these physical sensations like shortness of breath or heaviness in the chest and that causes heart palpitations and that causes blood pressure to go up and then we're sweating and then we're, you know, and that, that sort of starts the whole downward downhill cycle toward a panic attack. Um, so I just am explicating this a little bit to, to point out the links between anxiety and, um, you know, anxiety, which we think of as a mental and emotional state and anxiety as a physical state in terms of all those sympathetic kinds of um, reactions that we develop. The second part of this webinar is, is, is looking at breathing. And this is a place where in today's talk, which I'm already halfway through, um, you know, I'm, I'm prepared to spend a tiny bit more time. So, because I think this is a really, you know, as someone who has a, an issue with breathing, um, I have a particular appreciation for the, um, the joy of being able to breathe freely. So, what I'd like you to do for just a moment is to take an inner, take a little inner audit. What I'd like you to do is check in on your heart rate. Uh, what's your heart rate like right now? What's your muscle tension like right now? How is it in your neck? How is it in your jaw? How is it in your hands? Are you clenching your fingers? Where are your shoulders? Let's do an even more internal check. How's your tummy? How's your stomach? How's your liver? If you have a gallbladder, how's your gallbladder? Um, and as I ask you these things that are giving us a chance to check in internally about things like muscle tension and visceral reactions right now, how did you get there? How did you do that? Because I'm willing to bet that one of the first things you did to take an internal audit about how things are for you was to take a deep breath. Breathing, which gives us a sense of sort of an internal check on our body, is a really powerful and effective way for us to become more acquainted with what's happening inside. And that sense of that, that sensation or that awareness of our sensation of what's happening inside, that has a name. It's called interoception. So you probably know about proprioception, right? Which is our sense of your position in space. And you know about other kinds of perception like tissue, like um, texture and hot and cold and damage and you know these other receptor types of things that we have in our body. Interoception is the sensation that comes in, that is processed all internally, not from our skin, but from our muscles and our organs. And the more people can be aware of their interoception, the more people can become aware of their physical state in a positive way, the better we are at moving toward that sense of self-efficacy. And one of the most powerful ways we do that is through breathing. So hold that thought and let's talk a tiny bit about COVID. And I'm just checking our time. Okay, good. So, I'm not going to go into this in a huge amount of detail, <coughs> pardon me, but I am going to <clears throat> talk about it a little bit. You probably are aware that COVID-19 uh, stands for Coronavirus Disease of 2019, and it is uh, caused by this virus, 
that is spread most effect effectively and efficiently as an airborne pathogen. So, you know, at the beginning, we were super worried about our surfaces, which was appropriate because we didn't know. So we were, you know, washing our groceries and we were like having our mail sit outside for three days. And we were doing all these things about our surfaces, including in our massage rooms, which was great. We probably had the cleanest massage rooms ever. And, and you know, when we were first beginning to open up after, after the shutdowns, and that's fine, I have no problem with that. But what we have learned is that COVID is spread much more effectively and efficiently as an airborne pathogen, which means it is spread whenever people not only yell or spit or sneeze or cough, it is spread when people do really crazy things like speak softly or exhale. Um, and that's a pretty important thing to know if you are working closely, say over someone's face, right? While you're doing massage. COVID um, is, uh, works most effectively by way of the respiratory tract starts there. Um, and this virus has a particular doorway into its target, um, its target cells. And that doorway is called an ACE2 receptor. And we have so many cells in the body that have ACE2 receptors, which means COVID is capable of infecting um, the cells in our respiratory tract, right? The cells of the alveoli and also the cells of the endothelium that wraps around the alveoli. And that endothelium can be affected by, can be, can be attacked by this virus throughout the body, which is one reason we were seeing some of those really wild, scary coagulopathy issues with COVID. We have found COVID um, in ACE2 positive cells in the central nervous system, in the liver, in the kidneys, in lots of other tissues. But for most people, the biggest repercussion of COVID is in the lungs. And in our, as we think about today's COVID survivors, what we wanna think about is the possibility, some people, not everybody, and it's mostly people who got really sick, but not everybody who got really sick is having these long-term lung issues. And this is the only variety of long-term or long hauler COVID that I'm gonna talk about today. But you know, the, the purpose of this talk is to focus on lung damage, right? The lung damage that we see with COVID has been seen to lead to what looks like permanent scarring um, and fibrotic lung disease and a condition called pulmonary fibrosis. Um, and because this is all, <laughs> wrapped up with the blood vessels that supply the alveoli and then send oxygenated blood back to the heart. Then we have issues with pulmonary vascular disease. And these are life-changing problems that can have long-term implications on people's quality of life. And to think about that, I want you to go back to our first vision of that circle between having problems breathing and feeling anxious and having that impact our quality of life and having that reinforce our problems breathing and having that make us feel anxious and having that, um, you know, create that vicious circle again. Well, in the medical community, the, the treatment for COVID or for people with long-term lung disease is, is an intervention called pulmonary rehabilitation. And I ended up looking into pulmonary rehab um, a little bit because, you know, partly because I wanted to know about it for people who've had COVID, but also I, I recently wrote an article on one of the possible complications of COVID, which is pulmonary fibrosis. And here are some things that I learned. The data says people who have had a respiratory infection, so this could be COVID or pneumonia or tuberculosis or really bad flu that maybe complicates the pneumonia, but people who have had a respiratory infection um, do better. They have better outcomes when they do this intervention. It's a particular kind of protocol called pulmonary rehabilitation. And what's involved in pulmonary rehabilitation, which is, um, conducted by respiratory therapists. But what's done in, um, co in pulmonary rehabilitation are these things. It involves looking at nutrition, looking at airway, looking at posture, clearance technique, which would be machines that do this, oxygen supplementation, breathing exercises, stretching, manual therapy, 
and physical activity. And I chose to put some of these elements of pulmonary rehab into bold because those are the places where I see um, a potential for some really nice crossover work between massage therapy and respiratory therapy. Um, so this was a statement by someone who studies pulmonary rehab in the context of people who have had pulmonary um, uh, infections. For all patients, we suggest a holistic package of care to address breathlessness, anxiety, oxygen requirement, palliative care, and rehabilitation. And again, I chose to put those terms in bold because those are the places where I believe that massage therapy and respiratory therapy, those are the specialists who do pulmonary rehabilitation, um, has great potential for overlap. And when I was writing that article on pulmonary fibrosis, which will be in the next edition of Massage and Bodywork magazine, um, I was able to interview a respiratory therapist who was also a massage therapist. And it was great to chat with him about those potentials. And if you, you know, the point that I would love to see people pursue about this is that if you are a massage therapist and you have clients who are dealing with respiratory issues and in the context of long COVID, do you see that there could be some really exciting places that your work could have impact in this circle? Is there a place for you to intervene here between breathing problems and the development of anxious responses to those breathing problems, between anxiety and people who limit their quality of life and their activities of daily living? Are there places you can see where massage therapy might be able to interrupt this vicious circle? I really, really think that there are some. And, um, you know, where I would like to point people um, is into, you know, is, is if you're, if this intrigue, intrigues you and you, you know, sort of feel a little bit excited about this, um, what I'd like to recommend that you do, because I'm not in practice, I'm not doing this work. Um, but I would love for you, if you have clients who have COVID who have problems with taking a deep, a deep, easy breath, for instance, is to, um, and if that's their priority, if that's something that they would like to do, uh, then work out a treatment strategy around breath work, around working with intercostals and working with the scalenes and the neck muscles and working with, you know, whatever access we can get to the diaphragm and to the um, obliques. If you're like me, and there's no reason to think that you are because I am peculiar, but you know, among the few massage therapy experience that I've had, experiences that I've had that really, I felt really changed my life. I mean, there've been just a few times I've gotten up off a table and felt profoundly changed. But one of them was after someone had done some really great breath work for me. And what I remember feeling was that I got off that table feeling like I was floating on air, like someone had injected me with eight hours of sleep and like there was nothing I couldn't do because I had so much power and so much energy. And it's, and it's that kind of work that I think our clients who are living with COVID really, really need. Not that they're gonna have a magical overnight fix because they won't. But anything we can do to help people restore their sense of power and their sense of drive and motivation and momentum through breath work, I think is gonna be especially effective. And the other thing I'd love for you to explore is relationships with respiratory therapists. If you have that kind of um, accessibility in your life and you might just put out a call among your colleagues, does anyone know a respiratory therapist would love to chat about massage? Um, you'll be surprised at how much feedback you'll get on that because um, there's a lot of us, there's a lot of people in, you know, who are really intrigued in this process. So <sighs> I've been talking really hard and really fast for almost half an hour. I'm going to wrap things up and then I think we'll have time for a question or two. Before I do that, I do want to invite you to stay in touch with me. 
you can find me at my website. I have a mailing list. I try to sound out a note, a, you know, like a couple of paragraphs every two weeks, just to let you know what's going on. But on my website, I also have a page specifically for COVID-19 resources, everything that I've written or pulled together about COVID-19 for massage therapists is on that page. I have a podcast now called I Have a Client Who, so do listen at, at uh, ABMP, that's abmp.com slash podcast, that comes out every Friday. Um, and I have just launched a brand new thing, uh, and that's a one-hour online self-paced CE course uh, called What's Next? COVID-19 Updates for Massage Therapists, and so all these links are here. Um, or you can reach out to me at my website and I'll hook you up and make sure that you find the information that you need. So to wrap it all up, I wanna say thank you. Thanks to Biotone, thanks to Donnell and Jean and all the people who made this possible. And at this point, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and ask Donnell what she wants me to do next. I would like to um, look at the chat and share some of what's come in. Um, and Joseph had asked also yoga therapy. Yes. Good for the, the breath, if you can address that at all. Um, not by anything other than my own personal experience, but I know that um, for many people with a really, with a, especially with a talented yoga teacher or, or some really good self-awareness about breathing, because it takes, it's, it's a learned practice, right? Healthy breathing. That's easy to lose. I notice that when I get nervous about my cough, for instance, my shoulders creep up and up. Um, but uh, I think yoga is a wonderful intervention for this as well. Absolutely. Another question. Do you know the type of breath work that the therapist used with you that was so impactful? <laughs> I don't remember. I remember that there was some... Um, Oh, what do you call it when you, you know, so they were compressing my rib cage and they said, breathe into my hands and force my hands apart. And it's like PNF, but it's not quite, it's maybe muscle energy technique or something like that. And that was part of it. But also they were just tracing intercostals and maybe doing some extra work around the edges of the rib cage. Um, it was, you know, it was maybe one of those fluky massages that we get every now and then. But I'll tell you what, if I were back in practice and, uh, and I wanted, I, I would be really intrigued at working with people who were having breathing problems related to COVID or COPD, uh, which is really, really common. And um, I, I think that finding a respiratory therapist to work with and sort of join heads with and, and see how your work can complement each other would be a you know, not only really exciting and enriching for massage therapists, but really great for the patients. Well, it looks like that. Let's see any more questions come in. No, a lot of thank yous for the presentation, um, facts and science and, and your compassion for this. Um, I think the aspect you brought up of networking in your community mm -hmm. to find out uh, you know, almost collectively, it sounds like you can speak to a, a yoga instructor, practitioner, you can reach out to respiratory therapists and really create a, a team that mm -hmm. can help your client uh, or clients. Um, let's see, another message. I see this from Barbara Searles. Thanks, Barbara. I will look for that. I agree that we definitely have a place in this work. I, I'm, I'm excited to see people step up and take it. And again, you know, part of what makes me so passionate about this is, is I've, I've been someone who has struggled with free and easy breathing for I don't know, 30 years or something. And so uh, I just think I, I know for a fact that massage can be a really powerful uh, part of this process. Well, well, thank you, Ruth. And um, oh, is there scientific training for breathing therapy as a massage therapist? I think it's asking is there specific training? I have not seen any. I haven't seen any. Oh, heck, but it would be interesting to go look, wouldn't it? You could go over to NCB or um, maybe the uh, FSMTB and see if anyone is doing CE classes in breath work. If you are really good at breath work, if you feel like you have a good line on this, 
um, maybe think about putting together a little a little workshop to see how that goes. Now I'm not sure. Oh, Hass myotherapy. You know what? I he was one of my students a million years ago, Robert Hass. So <laughs> there you go. Okay, so um, I think that's all the questions for right now. But Ruth, um, Ruth's website is by her image on yep. the screen right now. RuthWarner.com. Easy, easy. Yeah. Tomorrow um, we'll follow up with a link to this recording, as well as um, the handout um, PowerPoint presentation that Ruth um, walked us through this evening. And um, before we close, and before I thank you all again for coming, I wanted to mention that we have um, some great EduTalk speakers coming up. Um, these are published in the Biotone Q2 uh, catalog. But April 20th, we have Kelly Lenny, Indigenous Healing Tradition Benefits, wow. which should be interesting. And May 4th, Shamaya Cha, Medical Massage, How, What, and Why. And May 18th, we have Carrie D'Ambrosia back again. Um, you can see some of his past recordings on the EduTalk Archive Library, but he will be presenting on May 18th, Total Body Evaluation. Thank you so much, Ruth. And thank you to everyone who attended. Um, keep an eye on your in basket for upcoming invites and tomorrow's um, tomorrow's follow up email with um, the link to the recording and and Ruth's PowerPoint. Thank you so much. And anything further in closing, Ruth? No, just thanks everybody. Thanks for your interest. And thanks again to Biotone. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful um, service that you are providing really appreciate it. You make it super easy. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, we enjoyed it and we and we're so happy to be able to uh, facilitate sharing information during no trade shows, no live classes. So right. again, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you to all. Yeah. Have a good evening. Bye, everybody. Bye.